Hey folks, I hope you are well and welcome to another Rocky Brand live stream. I uh, had a little bit of a technical issue at the start there, I'm so sorry for running it a tiny bit late, um, but it was only a minute or so, so we are all good. Um, uh, hey David, thanks for joining, uh, nice to see you. Um, just wanted to say, uh, David, thank you for submitting your logo for critique again i know that you've updated it we won't actually be um touching on that today um want to focus on a quick overview of brand strategy today and we will definitely be reviewing your logo again on the stream next time if however you are needing some feedback on it if it's for a client and you need my feedback on it um before then just drop me another email and let me know Okay. Um, hey Steve, thanks for joining. Hey T Phil, um, it's been a while. Not seen you comment for a for a little while here. Um, so just checking the stream health. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit of buffering and stuff going on. So hopefully you guys um, are seeing stuff um, okay. Um, let me just uh, check things here saying the stream status is poor so i don't know what's it's like for you guys um let's see stream settings uh, da, 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 da. hey andrew um if you guys could just kind of let me know in the chat if the stream is pretty bad um for you guys because i don't want it to be terrible um it's not giving me it's not giving me good news here at this side saying that it's it's a poor stream status so let me know um there's a little bit of a lag between um me speaking to you guys and you guys then posting in the chat um steve's asking um okay i'll just keep going on if if at any point during the stream it starts to get really bad just drop something in the chat and let me know um and i can always check it but i've got a big big warning here on the on the the streaming software saying that it's rubbish um david's saying do you do logo critiques privately away from your channel for work which isn't ready to go public just yet um i don't uh, really um a because I haven't really got time to do a lot of private critiques. Um, and so a way of kind of getting around that is by doing the critiques on the stream so that people can improve their logos and we all learn from the input and advice that I give as well. Uh, I could do private critiques, but I'd have to charge for them. So you know it, it depends on how important it would be for someone to want a private critique from me um i have thought of different kind of options for something like that you know maybe you know i've looked at patreon memberships where people could pay a monthly fee and you know one of the perks of that would be that you get your logo reviewed um you know you send it in and i'll give you a i'll do a critique of your logo, send you back a video um, of me critiquing the logo, things like that. Um, but I just have to be careful of my time because uh, obviously I've got a lot of client work that I need to do as well. So it's just getting the balance. Um, so right now, um, right now, the best way to get a critique is to submit it for a critique on the channel. But as you say, it might be something that you're not really ready to have critiqued on the channel. Um, but I'll bear it in mind. I'll see if I can think of a way of doing that um that isn't going to you know break the bank for anyone who's wanting um some quick critique you know 15 minute um feedback on what they've got so i'll have a think about that um but today we are just going to do an overview of brand strategy because i think there are there are some people who know a bit about brand strategy some people know a lot about it and some people know very little um it is a big big deep subject uh one that you can't really cover on one live stream um one that you can't really cover in a day-long live stream there's so much to it but i think 
this evening what we can do is just go through a really quick overview of you know brand strategy and why a why I feel it's important that you have an understanding of it um, whether you're a designer or you know a marketer or even just you know as a business owner you should have a, have a good understanding of brand strategy and where it can help um, I think brand strategy has kind of been second cousin to to marketing for a long time you know people see marketing as promoting your business uh, advertising it getting your product and service and your message out there so that people will buy it you know that's that's marketing um but marketing needs direction it needs you know in what way should you market it you know how should the brand be speaking to the customer what personality should you be speaking to the customer in should it be humorous should it be serious all of that stuff is directed by the strategic side of the brand and that's where brand strategy comes in um and you know i'm like a lot of other people didn't really take much notice of brand strategy um i was a graphic designer i was a logo designer and i basically created logo designs that kind of I suppose fitted the industry sector that it was in. So if I was doing a logo for an accountant, I would make it look like it was for an accountant. You know, bringing in a lot of the cliched stuff that you would see with an accountant. I'm not, you know, not as far as bringing in an abacus or a calculator, although I probably have done that in the past. Um, you, you know, that's where my logo design would be, or I would just create a logo design that looked good. When I started to learn more about brand strategy it was a game changer for me because by introducing by taking a strategic approach before doing any design work what that then did was I then had um, sort of a plan of what the brand was what the brand was trying to be and by knowing all of that, you know, who the brand was trying to speak to, what personality it had, that re really helped me create the logos because I then, having a personality and knowing how that brand wants to communicate lets you create a logo that supports all of that. You know, some people think that um, your logo is your brand and it's not. It's one tiny, tiny part of it. Your logo works in conjunction with marketing, with uh, the rest of your branding with your brand strategy it all works as one so I want to kind of just go through um, the elements for me that make up a brand strategy that I personally now need to have before I'll do any design work um, so let me just jump over to this here so uh, and if you've got any questions, by the way, please drop them in. Um, I'd rather this wasn't just a one-way um, conversation. If you've got any questions uh, about, you might not have any questions about brand strategy, but you know, any questions about anything really, I'm happy to answer on the on the call tonight. So what you can see here is essentially what makes up your entire. Uh, brand without going into sort of marketing exercises and stuff this is sort of for me this is this is sort of as far as I go in terms of uh, brand work I don't do marketing it's not it's not what I do I understand marketing and I and I I kind of know how to market my own business but I don't get involved in any marketing exercises really for my clients. I can advise and guide uh, based on the strategy, but I don't really do any marketing um, stuff. So for a brand, there are sort of two main elements. You've got the strategic element and the expression or the expressive element. So the strategic side, or what would be classically known as the strategic side, is the brand substance, sometimes called brand core, sometimes called brand foundations. Essentially, it's the stuff that sits at the very bottom that supports everything else above it. Um, and that substance includes your brand purpose, your vision, your mission, and your values. Then after that, 
you would be looking into, once you know what your purpose is and your vision, your mission, your values, you then move into uh, honing in on who your target customer is. What are they like? You know, what are they expecting? How should you speak to them? And um, you want to look at your competitors. You want to do an audit of your competitors. What are they doing well? What are they not doing so well? And when you find out what they're not doing so well or what customers are saying is like, oh, I did, you know, had this interaction with this brand. They dropped the ball here. That gives you as a brand an opportunity to pick that ball up. So that's an insight and a gap that you can that you can really run with uh, that others in your sector may be may not be doing. And then really importantly is how are you different? Why should someone, you know, what, it might be that you have a slightly different feature on a product, but is that enough to make people to come, o- come over and buy your product or service? Um, maybe not, but you can differentiate in many, many different ways and as part of the strategic brand building process, we look, or I look at with customers, what's the strongest way to differentiate to make you stand out from your competitors? So um, the first thing I want to kind of say is the best sort of start when it comes to learning about brand strategy, I would say are the books by Marty Neumeyer. And this one, the Brand Gap is an awesome book to start with. It's not big, it's like it's 194 pages in total, but the book is full of you know photos and diagrams, and the text is actually it's pretty um let's see. The text on the pages is pretty big. It's a really, really quick read. You could read it in a few hours. Um there's a series of these. The one after this is called um, Zag, which is about differentiating. Uh, so the way Marty puts it is if, you know, if all of your competitors are zigging, you know, they're zigging in one direction, then you want to zag and be different and stand out. Uh, that's a really good book. And they're all like this. They're all really quick reads. Um, this one, um, The Brand Gap, is basically about uh, how you get from the strategic side to the design side. It's that kind of, you know, where do they communicate with one another and how does that work? Because for a lot of people, like I mentioned at the start, you've got a lot of designers who do design, but they don't interact with the strategic side. And you've got people who do strategy, but they don't know how to communicate with the design side. And so you've got this gap, as Marty puts it, the brand gap, between strategic and design and you really want to bring those together and when you can bring those together it's really really powerful um so i highly recommend that you that you get this um i'll bring up a list of books later on um that are helpful um steve's saying why do you you feel some brands are able to transcend their initial markets and niches while others fall flat when they try the same um sometimes i mean it's being first at something um is always good you know when you're seen as as the first in an area then that tends to stick in people's minds and you'll find that you know if a brand moves into an area and does well at it their competitors will try to move into that area too but they're kind of coming at it from a copycat approach rather than the first brand to do it will have probably done a lot of work and a lot of research and have a good understanding as to why they should be in that space and and you know the interaction that they need to have with customers to make it work the copycats will be coming in and just going we need to sell that thing too then if it's working for them it'll work for us but if they've not done the research or any of the strategic work to understand why it works then they're potentially going to fall flat on their face um and uh, that's the one thing about strategy as well. A good brand strategy will tell you when something isn't right for your brand. It'll tell you in advance if if it if it's going to be a mistake. That's if you know if you do the strategic work properly. There are many examples of brands out there that have moved into 
areas of services or products that really didn't it didn't fit. Uh, I've done a video on um, one, and it was for uh, Findus, the frozen food company, and they moved into um, making oral hygiene, so toothpaste. So Findus were really, really well known and only known for making uh, frozen food products, fish fingers, uh, lasagna, all that stuff. Um, You know, the stuff you find in the freezer aisle. Then they decided, oh, you know, we, you know, we should move into making toothpaste. And it bombed. It just didn't work. Um, because people had this a strong association of frozen food and they're like, well, toothpaste and... You can, there is a connection in that if once you eat food, you should brush your teeth. But the connection between, you know, minty toothpaste and minty lasagna just kind of freaked people out and they couldn't get this this bridging of Finders doing these two different products and it and it bombed. Um and it's and I just can't figure out if they've done if they'd have done any strategic work um and done some uh focus groups, they must have had some weird people on the focus groups if they thought that toothpaste was a great idea. Or maybe Findus just thought internally themselves, this is a great idea, we don't need to do focus groups, let's go and do this. And obviously, and they spent a lot of money, you know, you spend a lot of money making these products um, and it didn't work. So, um, yeah, so, you know, David saying Findus Crispy Pancakes, you know, what do you want? Do you want spearmint Findus Crispy Pancakes? um it's just it's such a weird one uh and that's just that's just one but there will be examples of of lots of companies um it's known as a brand extension so you'll have your your core brand and then you make extensions into other areas that you think you know could be profitable for for the company um so I suppose a, a a brand that's that's got a lot of brand extensions um, would be um, maybe Tesla um, has a lot. Of, well, yeah, Tesla, you know, they've got their car and stuff, and then they, then they've moved into trucks with vehicles. But then they've also got the Boring Company um, making these tunnels. I think under uh, Las Vegas right now, you know, for for transport. So it's a brand extension. It's tunneling but it's linked to vehicles and, you know, Tesla make electric vehicles. So there is, you know, the transport link is there. That's a bit more concrete for people. People can understand that. I'll get in my car and I'll drive through a tunnel underground so it's not as, you know, it's not as congested. Whereas the tenuous link between we make food, people need to brush their teeth. It's not quite the same sort of link there. Um... And then you've probably got Apple as well. Apple's another um, good, you know, way of looking at that. They made computers, but then they moved into creating the iPod, you know, for um, people to store their MP3s. Uh, That's a brand extension. The iPhone is a brand extension. Um, And they've obviously got it completely contained within this... um, Apple ecosystem, which has really, really worked for them. Um, but then you've got other computer companies that tried the same. You know, you've had other computer companies that have tried to make MP3 players and things, and they just absolutely bombed because people, for some reason, saw them only as PC manufacturers, not MP3 player manufacturers. Um, but again, I think some of the reasoning for that is, like I mentioned, Apple created the iPod. Now, there were MP3 players before the iPod, I'm pretty sure. But the way Apple approached it, as they do, was from a user you know, experience and making it the easiest and simplest way to use. And they had the, they had the track wheel, which nobody else had. And it was just a really, really nice um, system. 
these other companies were approaching it more from a technological standpoint. You know, all the latest gizmos and stuff. And it was a lot of them were overcomplicated and people couldn't understand them and they were breaking. So Apple were coming at it. They were using their brand strategy. And their brand strategy is always focused on user experience. Um, I would, you know, I don't know how that is these days, but definitely when Steve Jobs was there, he was focused completely on the user experience. And if it wasn't good enough, it never saw the light of day. The other companies weren't so focused on that. They were focused on having the latest hardware the you know the fastest the biggest storage and that's not always what people are looking for and so they fail so that's another place where um uh, if we go back to to my sheet here where we've got positioning and we've got target market it's about understanding your customer and if you don't understand your customer inside out um i think steve Jobs said something i'm paraphrasing here but i think he sort of said you know give the customer what they need before they know they need it or give the customer what they want before they want it or something like that. But he was, you know, he would create things or maybe not him, his team um, would, you know, create things and put them out there and they'd never been out there before and they just would, people would be like, this is the thing I've always needed but didn't know I needed like the iPhone, for example, just completely changed the smartphone landscape because it was done in a different way um, and it was done from you know uh, a user perspective. Uh, hey Nick, how you doing? Uh, you are a little bit earlier this time, yeah. You, normally you're an hour late, but you're here. You're here twenty minutes in. Um, Uh, Steve saying, I love how RVCA, for example, are able to seamlessly be a lifestyle, skate, surf, fashion and MMA brand all at once. That's my branding goals. Yeah, some brands are just really good at it. Um, I think lifestyle brands, can they can bridge a lot of spaces just because it's lifestyle. Lifestyle can cover quite a bit. Um, I think if you're in a more traditional space, like again, Findas in the food space, how do you break out from that, you know? Um, if you're in the electronics space, it might be easier to move into areas of other types of electronics and expand that way. But again, you need to be careful about brand extensions because if you extend into an area and it fails, it could actually destroy the entire brand. So, you know, you need to be pretty confident about what it, what it is that you're, you're moving into. Um, you know, because it might not be what, what people want. Um, it is it is something that, that you do need to think very, very carefully about before you before you move into, uh, into doing that. So I want to just kind of touch on, um, I talked about Marty's book um, and I highly recommend as well that you, you check out um, Marty's website because one of the things as well is that you need to make sure that you understand the difference between a brand and, and you know, what the brand strategy is trying to do. So I like Marty's um, definition of what a brand is. He says a brand is a person's gut feeling about a product, a service or an organization. And he says that because... Um, and so let's scroll down here. Um, it's a person's gut feeling because brands are defined by individuals, not companies, markets, or publics. Um, in the past, you could probably say that brands were defined by companies because in the old school way of uh, brand building, it was create a product, create a service, and just advertise the hell out of it. Just advertise the hell out of it you know there weren't many tv channels there was no internet nothing like that it was, it was all newspapers and the tv and you just it's just repetition just absolutely drum it into people's heads and that's how you built a brand you built the brand around the product these days it's different the customer is much more in control and you're kind of having to sell your product or service in a way 
that makes the client or the customer like you, uh, feel loyal to you. And that's different. Um, And so whereas it was like repetition all the time, you're trying to build a relationship now. And another way of kind of some people describe it is that a brand, you know, so Marty's saying it's a gut feeling. um, And that's essentially, you know, it's internal to the customer. How they feel about your brand is individual to them. And you can't really control how someone, I mean, think about how you feel about another person. They can't really control how you feel about them. What they can do is they can influence you. They can be nice to you. They can give you things. And that will make you feel a specific way around, you know, about them. But I can't, I can't walk up to somebody and say to them, feel this way about me. It's not going to work because even just that saying, I want you to feel this way about me means that they'll probably feel the opposite way because I'm telling them to feel that they have to feel this way about me um, as a personal brand. That's not how it works. It's interactions. People feel the way they do about brands through their own interactions and the interactions of others. Other people interacting with the brand and telling that person their experiences. That's really hard to control and you can't control it, you can influence it. And again, to influence it, you need to have a plan. You need to know what your brand stands for, uh, how it should be talking, what it should be saying. And that's where a brand strategy comes in. A brand strategy is essentially, um, I had a little bit written down here on a post-it note. I've got some notes um, so that I, I'm not rambling entirely for this uh, this live stream. So a definition of a brand strategy, it's a formal plan used by a business to create a particular image of itself in the minds of current and potential customers. Okay, so it's all about creating this mindset in other people. And like it says there, current customers and potential customers. So just because someone becomes a customer doesn't mean that they're always going to think you're great. You have to work at that. And that's where, you know, things like um, customer returns, if something's not working or broken, you know, what's that process like? Is it easy? Do you make it hard? Do you not do returns at all? All of these things. There's so many, there's so many touch points where things could go wrong with a brand that you have to be all over it. Um, And again, that's where a brand strategy will come in because it will let you segment your strategy into different areas so that you can keep a close eye on it. Um, So let's uh, go through. So the reason I said Marty's website's good, um, and this is how Marty follows up the whole gut instinct thing. He says, your brand isn't what you say it is. It's what they say it is, which kind of, in a nutshell, is what I've just said over the course of five minutes. Um, You know, you can say what you want about your brand, but it doesn't really matter because it's what the customer says. They're the ones that are buying, you know. Um, You can say, we are the best car manufacturer in the world. But if customers don't think so, then you're not. It's just you saying that. It's, it's you know, it's not going to work. Um, so Marty's got some really cool stuff on his website. He's got this um, little section here called Steal This Idea, um, where you, you can download slides and things that have um, little bits about brand building. Um, and they're really good to, to have a look at. He's got a lot of really good articles as well um, about brand building, uh, which are worth looking at. Um, but I just kind of downloaded a couple of things here. Um, one of the things which I mentioned was differentiation. How are you different? And Marty has this really simple test, which he calls the onlyness test, meaning we are the only brand that does this thing. Um, and he says you should be able to answer this or complete this simple um, statement. Our offering is the only category that benefit. You should be able to complete that and you wouldn't believe how difficult it is to complete this. 
it takes a lot of work. It looks so simple, but it takes a lot of work. And this is actually in his book, Zag. Um, and it's it is so difficult to, to complete that, to, to make it your own and um, not have it just be surface level, you know, just um, lip service to something. It needs to have good meaning and it it lets you once you get that once you understand what your offering is and you're the only one in your industry or category that does it that delivers on a specific benefit kind of the world's your oyster that then helps you move into your marketing lets you move into communications because you now know what it is that you you need to deliver um but it's really difficult to do and I am just touching on a lot of these things um, really quickly because we only have so much time tonight and I don't want to, um, you know, go on forever. Just want to check here. Um, hey, Camille, thanks for joining. Um, David's saying uh, lamb and mint toothpaste might have worked, going back to the Findus stuff. Um, I think it may have worked for maybe two people, yourself and one other, and then it probably wouldn't have worked. Um so let's see. Um, so just opened up a couple of things um, that Marty's got here. So one of the ones that he has is um, how brand brand building kind of used to work and how it works today. So sort of in the olden days, it would be the company creates the brand, which attracts customers, which then sustains the company. And then that, that kind of, you know, is a circular loop. But Marty's saying that today, that's different. It's now the company creates customers, the customers build the brand, and the brand sustains the company. And then the the loop goes round and round. And that's that, that pretty much is, you know, how it works. Because the company, you have to create the customers for your product or service. You know, you can have a product or service which you can market, but if there's no customers for it, you don't, you know, you don't know if there's a customer base for it, then you don't have a brand really. So what you need to do is you need to work at figuring out who your customer is, work on pulling those customers to your brand, making them loyal advocates. They then are the ones that talk about your brand and tell others and buy your product, which obviously brings in money, which then sustains the company, which means the company has more money to make sure that customers are happy and the product's doing the thing. And then you have that loop going around. That's a really, really simplified version of it. On Marty's website, he does have a little bit of a dis- description for each of these that you can have a look at. Um, this is always a good one. So this is sort of how, um, you know, of of how some people, how you can represent a brand um, it's done in a very tongue, uh, tongue-in-cheek tongue way. But, you know, so the, he's saying, so this is how marketing would promote a brand. They would just say, hey, I'm a great lover, right? That's the brand speaking, saying, I am this. And that's marketing, just, you know, classic marketing. Just com- just repeat the same message and hopefully people will believe it over time. Um, then you've got telemarketing, which is, you know, calling people up, cold calling probably, and saying, I'm a great lover. I hate cold calling. I hate that kind of marketing. For some people it works, you know, or they wouldn't still be doing it. Um, It definitely works. I don't know how. I hate it when people cold call me. It does not make me want to buy their service. It interrupts my day and it's annoying. Um, Then you've got public relations. Trust me, he's a great lover. So that's kind of the same as marketing. You know, it's, 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 it's the brand telling people how they, you know, how, how people should think about the brand. Uh, then you've got advertising, again, marketing, just the repetition. I'm a great lover, I'm a great lover, I'm a great lover, over and over and over again. Then you've got design, which, you know, takes words and puts it into pictures. And so you've got this love heart over their head. And then you've got branding, which is where it's different. So branding, if you remember, is the gut feeling. It's how people perceive in their own minds the brand. So this is someone responding to the brand saying, I understand that you're a great lover. And that that understanding has come through interactions that they've had and how other people have 
spoken about the brand and also how the brand has communicated through their own through their marketing but done in a way that isn't you know sort of in your face all the time and it's you know it's more subtle uh, when you do it that way um and then we've got this strategic pyramid here which we'll get into in a second so going back here so if we go back to the the brand strategy and I talked about this this one here which is the foundations which is your purpose your vision your mission and your values these these are the things which drive the business forward and if we go back to that this pyramid here so we can see here that Marty's got purpose at the top so your purpose for a brand is the reason that you exist beyond making money right so your purpose it never changes what you know what is the purpose of why have you built the business um it might be for some people that it is they just want to make money but no one's going to connect with that brand if it's purely about making money now your purpose can be many many things it doesn't always have to be you know um and you know a lot of people think when it comes to purpose it needs to be things like end world hunger and stuff like that it's not what it is um your purpose could be as as simple as making an individual's life easier through the implementation of a service or a product okay and that's your focus is to make that person's life easier and that's your that's your purpose below that you've then got your mission which is the master plan for creating value and you've got your vision which is a shared picture of mission success so these two interact with one another and then underneath that you've got your goals so the short-term objectives that support your uh, mission and vision so these tend to be one to five years mission and vision are longer term now in some instances you might actually see this pyramid flipped around so the purpose you know so marty's saying that your purpose is the most important thing it's at the top um i kind of work almost in a flipped way for that um where your purpose is the most important but i've got it as the first thing you know so you have your purpose you then have your vision which is that long term where you want the brand to be where you want you see the business being in 20 years time then you have your mission which are the things that you do every single day to move you forward towards the vision that you have and for me the goals are mixed in with the mission so these these things are pretty much the same for all brand strategies just some people kind of have them in different um, orientations and so like I say so for me it's purpose then it's vision then it's mission and then you have your values which is the philosophy that you want to run the brand by um and you'll see on some websites for companies they'll have their values listed uh some have four some have a lot more i think google has about 12 generally the older the company gets they will introduce um more values uh to help the culture of the brand uh and again culture falls within the brand strategy uh and the culture can be for um hiring new staff um, but also as well you want your customers to know that you have a good brand culture brand culture has become a bit of a buzzword um, more people talking about it uh, especially when it comes to the employment uh, industry more and more people are wanting to work for brands that have a good internal culture there's been plenty of brands that don't have a good internal culture or they or they say they, they do and then you actually get the job and you find out actually that was a lot of crap you know they talk the talk but they're not walking it uh, they're not you know implementing what they say so culture comes in as well and that's kind of tied to to the values that you have um I mean, I could go each of these purpose, vision, mission, values, target market. We could do a live stream on each of those individually. They're so in-depth. Um, once you've got those, that's when you move on to your positioning, which is, you know, how you want to stand out, what makes you different. And like I say, you then study your target market. So you study your audience, your ideal customer, uh, you study your competitors, and then you figure out, and so differentiation strategy would 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 bring in the um, 
only in a statement. That's how you're going to zag um, where your others are, other your competitors are zigging. Um, and then once you have that, you then move. So that's kind of like your base strategy. For me, this whole thing, this whole page is strategy. But just to kind of break it down and make it easier to sort of understand, you've got the, the strategic core elements here um, of who you are and why you're different. And then you move into how you're going to express those strategic elements. And so that brings in your archetype, which is the personality of, of the brand. And there are 12 main archetypes. Uh, I'm not going to go into them today. Uh, I do want to do a series of videos on those, though. Um, and the archetypes help you to connect with your customer. Your customer will have an archetype of, of their own, and you will have so what you generally what you do is you work out the archetype the brand archetype of your customer and then you look at your brand and go well what's the best archetype to that will speak to the archetype of this one you know so let's say um it's someone looking for um guidance and help then there's an archetype called the sage, which is knowledge and, you know, um, think about think about Yoda in Star Wars. You know, he would be a sage or Gandalf would be a sage, kind of that, you know, the figure who has a lot of knowledge and passes on that knowledge to, to someone to help them uh, improve and move through life. So that's where archetypes come in. There's different archetypes. There's uh, the maverick, there's the magician, there's the explorer, and they all have different characteristics that would help, that help flesh out the brand and make them seem like a real living, breathing entity that you use the archetype when it comes to how you express and talk to your audience. So once you've worked out your brand archetype and your audience's archetype, you can then move on to your tone of voice or your brand personality. And your tone of voice is how you communicate. Um, is your tone of voice fun? Is it serious? Is it calm? Is it energetic? You work that out and then you start to create the language and the vocabulary. So you would have in your brand guide, for example, um, we would say this, we would not say it like this. Um, so an example would be, uh, let's say you were, uh, let's say you were a business coach. You'd say, we would say need to, we would not say should. You know, so there's a difference between, oh, or, or could, you know. So, well, you know, if you want to do this, then you should be learning more about this. Whereas you want to say, well, if you want to do this, you need to learn about this. It's different ways. And in your brand guide, what you do is, is you just have a series of um, boxes or lists of words and phrases that the brand would use and ways of saying things that, that the brand just would never use. And what that does is that means that anyone who's writing content can use that as a reference. And, you know, if they're writing a blog post or something or a piece of advertising, they can reference that and go, okay, in what, what's, you know, how should I be writing this? Is it humorous? Is it um, serious? What type of words and phrases can I use? And then they can take that. And then that means that anyone should be able to write content and it will always sound like it's coming from the brand. Uh, I like to tell clients that their brand should be created as a person. So if I were to meet their brand at a networking event as a person, what would they look like? How would they dress? How would they talk to me? What words would they use? Would they use slang words? You know, would they be, um, would they sound educated? Would they sound more, um, casual if you can build your brand as a person it makes it so much easier because then when you're actually creating content um, you're writing that content as if that brand as a person is creating that content and you're having a conversation then rather than creating content from this business entity you know, then it can maybe come across as a bit more sterile. But if you think about your brand as a person, even give it a name, you know, give it a, a human name, 
then it really makes a big difference. And again, this is where the brand strategy helps you to flesh out your brand as a living, breathing thing, not just you know a cold set of guidelines. Uh, that's you, you don't want that. Yes, your brand strategy, your brand book is a set of guidelines that you can refer to when it comes to your branding and your marketing, but it should be it should feel like it could be a living breathing person um once you've got the language and the vocabulary then i move on to the communications framework where we create a a core message framework um of a, what it is that we do how we deliver it what the benefits are um how we benefit that you know a person's uh day to day um we create a story framework and that's the story framework is a powerful thing. That's where you basically uh, break up uh, your ideal customer. You create um, you create an event in that person's life and it's how your product or service comes into that person's life, makes a change. So you start off with the problem that the person has and by the end of the story framework, what's the result of them interacting with your product. Now, some products will have life-changing um, interactions and some will just make that day better. You know, it might be if you're a coffee shop, then, you know, they're, you know, feeling a bit run down, a bit tired. Um, they come into your coffee shop, they grab a coffee, you know, they feel more refreshed, they're ready for the day. You know, it could be something as simple as that. But you want to create these little micro stories and uh, chapters that, again, bring your customer to life that your living, breathing brand is interacting with. And you, you're creating these narratives that help you when you're thinking about, well, and, you know, thinking about the Findus thing, you know, oh, if we're having this conversation with our customer what what are they likely to think about us moving into toothpaste and stuff you should be able to enact a conversation because you should know what you know they're going to do now you will speak to real people and you should do focus groups and stuff if you're going to do big brand extensions like that but your brand strategy guide should should give you enough of a of a warning that it's maybe not the right area. You know, it's it's your brand guidelines are kind of a set of bumpers that keep you on track. You can maybe jump out every now and again and test the waters, but you really want to sort of keep within your vision, you know, and that's the thing is you've got this vision all the time, you know, is this is this if we move into this, is this taking us where we want to go is it really on our purpose and our vision for the future or are we just do we think there's some quick money to be made there is that going to impact our brand adversely when you look at the strategy you go yeah it's probably not a good idea let's just put our efforts into moving forward and you know doing what we're good at um and i think in the example of findus i think the may have looked at the money side of things and obviously it fell flat on its face. Uh, then you've also got things like um, tagline and hooks. So these are like the memorable things like, you know, slogans and stuff that you try to come up with something that links the brand name to what you do um, or, you know, to an outcome. It doesn't have to be, you know, linked to the product or service. It could just be what's the outcome that you give to someone. Um... You know, McDonald's, theirs is like, uh, I'm loving it. Um, some people do and some people don't. Again, it's about, you know, interacting with brands and what, what I think in my mind or my gut feeling about a brand would be different to someone else's. Um, taglines and hooks can be really difficult to come up with because you don't want them to be too long and wordy. Uh, you want them to be quite short and memorable. And again, that's, you know, it's hard to do. But it's easier to do if you've got story frameworks, core message frameworks, language and vocabulary, a tone of voice, you know your archetype, you know what your differentiation is, you know what your competitors are bad at and good at, and you know your target market. Without any of this stuff, if you're just trying to create a tagline and a hook based on a company name and their product, 
it's a lot more difficult. Or you do create it, but it's a bit, maybe a bit shallow and doesn't really have any deep meaning to it. Uh, and you really want to kind of have a meaningful brand because uh, that's what we're talking about. You know, it's like that emotional connection between customers. And so once you've kind of got, and I know this is like really, really quick and I'm going through this quickly. Once you have all of this, that is when you can start to create the visual stuff, which is your brand identity, um, your brand identity system here. So that's like your logo, the any the photography style that you use, You've got your uh, any supporting graphics, so you could have like iconography and stuff like that, um, and the style guide. Um, so all of that kind of falls under your brand identity system. And then you've got your presence, which is when that stuff moves out into the world on your website, your social media, um, and your other brand collateral like your business cards, merchandising, etc. Now, there are a lot of brands that don't do any well, I wouldn't say brands, as maybe smaller businesses and stuff like that who don't really know, understand brand strategy and how it can help and really, you know, really give them a stronger start to their to their brand um, by having all that in place. Um, and they go straight to the logo. They have their company name and they go straight to the logo and then they create all of this stuff. And to start with, it might be good. It might all be good. But as you start to get bigger... As you start to need to win more customers, as you as you have ideas for moving out into other brand extensions, what do you do? How do you do it? How do you write it? How do you approach it? If you have these strategic brand elements in place, it makes it so much easier. If you start with this and then work backwards, the chances are what you'll find is is that your logo probably doesn't fit you anymore um, because you've you know you've had no guide, so you've just moved your business into where people are spending money, and so you don't, and that's where you know there is no purpose other than making money, and so you you start to get dragged over where customers are are dragging you over to, which then makes it difficult for you to make your own decisions because you're then trapped in that space of moving with the customer now if the money is there great but what if something changes and you have to adapt then you're you're going to be a bit lost whereas if you have this strategy from the beginning then it does help you to make decisions and helps you to kind of understand your audience you know if they are moving down this this way why is that let's look at things and figure out a way that we can follow or how we can uh, influence their way of thinking towards our brand so that they come back. You know, maybe we've obviously dropped the ball somewhere. What is that? What can we do to change that? Let's look at, you know, who we are uh, and work on that. Um, sorry, I've not been looking at the chat. I've been blabbering away. Um, Steve saying, do you mean with customer buyer personas? I've always struggled with them. Just feel like I'm making it up. <laughs> Who knows what the real customer really is or thinks? What's your experience with them? Uh, yeah, you can. You see a lot of stuff, you know, about making up buyer personas um, where you, you you make your ideal customer, right? So there's a lots of boxes. You give them a name. You give them an age, how much money they earn. Um, and you can, some people just make that up because to that's their ideal customer. Um the way that I do it is I actually look at, um, if it's an existing company that I'm working with, I look at their existing customers, but then you look at their competitors and you look at their customers and you look at what they're saying and then you do a little bit of snooping. So if you go on social media and you go, okay, there's, there's Steve and he's just left this review or he's left this comment, you can then kind of find out, because it's, it's, it's public stuff, you can then find out a little bit about Steve if you go to his social media page, it'll probably tell you, you know, some some stuff about him. It might have his birthday there. It might say where he works. Um, it feels a bit creepy. I get, you know, I get that. It feels a bit creepy kind of going in and, and looking, at, looking at all this stuff. But it's valuable information. And if you, if you do that for enough customers, then what you do is you then take the average of that and you can create... You don't just have to have one either. You can have multiple. 
you might have different products or different services and you might need to have a an ideal customer for each of those so that when you're creating content you're speaking directly to the ideal customer for that particular service um so i don't like to just kind of make them up i would much rather look at um existing customers now if it's a brand new business they don't have any existing customers but the chances are they have that new business will be moving into a space where they'll have competitors so you look at their competitors and you look at their customers and then you kind of look at what the customers are saying um, you can look at the good stuff that they're saying but the really interesting thing is when is the bad stuff that they're saying because if they're saying bad stuff then that means that there's an opportunity for your client or you as a business, if you want to do this as a business owner, there's opportunities there to pick up the ball, like I mentioned earlier, and fill in those gaps where the other companies are, they're just not really delivering what the customer wants. And so you can pick up that information from there. But yeah, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't make somebody up from thin air. Um, You can if you want, but I think it's much better to have a, you know, an average person made up from real people. Um, oh, hey, Fox, I didn't know you were on on here. Um, uh, just want to give a shout out to Fox. Fox has been an awesome mentor to me for uh, uh, helping me with uh, moving into strategy and stuff myself. Um, he's a very purpose, purpose-led purpose fella, is Fox, and um, an awesome person to boot um so always listen to what fox says uh and you might want to check out fox's uh website actually i'm going to give you a shout out fox uh let me just uh, see if i can (laughs) find your uh website i don't know how to spell phenomenal and it's not the m&m song what's your website address fox i don't know if it'll let you type it into the chat um but we'll find it um actually if i go to let's go linkedin all right let's see here we go kind of getting a little bit distracted but i think it's definitely worth when you know we've been talking about purpose um as the as as the first element really in brand strategy and um, for me fox is a is one of the the pinnacles of um leading through purpose um and basically just wanting to make the world a better place really so it's um i'm going to drop this into the chat and you guys can can check out a website you know and it's you know it's a new website it's not been up long. Fox has you really just kind of launched this. But um, if you look at Phenomenal Inc., um, which doesn't seem to be loading for me. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so it is loading. Um, but, you know, have a look at um, Fox's website. Um, so, yeah, it's a quick shout out for you, Fox. Uh, right, so where was I? Yeah, so, you know, creating customer personas and stuff. So, um, and Fox is just saying, absolutely, people connect to people. Um, uh, it's funny, I'm trying to read comments back and it's obviously I've said something and then people are asking based on what I've said and I've forgotten what I said at the time. Um, David, you said like telling a story and I'm not entirely sure what that's linked to. Um, Steve saying, if the products are the same as the competition, can brand purpose alone be enough to differentiate you from the others? It could be, you know, it could be if you want to kind of push that. Um, I don't know what the purpose, you know, your difference in purpose would be, but um, I think you you maybe, you know, if, so let's say you have a, a product and it's it's exactly the same as someone else's, you know, features, the benefits, everything's exactly the same, price is exactly the same, um, then, and you've got two brands who are selling that, then really, you know, if one has a, you know, one maybe doesn't have a, a clear purpose other than selling that that thing, whatever it is, 
but the other brand has, you know, maybe has a purpose where, let's just say, uh, they use an element or a percentage of their profits that goes to a charity or, or you know, something like that, you know, something that's that's beneficial to the wider the wider world, then that's going, someone who feels like that they would rather be spending their money with a company where some of that money is going to do good and not just go to a bunch of shareholders, then they'll probably connect more closely with that brand because that brand has purpose. So in that respect, yes, purpose alone could be the difference. But I think you need to, you know, use your purpose. Um, and like I say, it doesn't have to be, you know, some people get stuck and want to have a purpose. Oh, I want to, you know, end homelessness or do that. Then you can have those types of purpose, but it's not always about that. It's just, sometimes it's just as simple as making that one person's day a bit better. And, you know, and if you can articulate that and that potential, you know, new customer stumbles upon your brand and, the way you talk to them and the way you come across pulls them in and makes them feel like you will make their day better, then they will probably, you know, do business with you. And like I said, that could be as simple as buying a coffee, you know, that improves that person's day. So purpose could could definitely um, be the only thing that you need, but don't go into it thinking that that is the only thing. It is a combination of a lot of stuff. Um, see Fox is getting involved here um, purpose is part of your uh, USP which is your unique selling point for anyone that doesn't know what USP is um, but it's how the impact of your purpose shows up the outcomes that really matter and that's what I've kind of said earlier on is that it's you know in the um, in the processes of it it's you know how are you making people feel? What's the outcome that your get that your product delivers? It might have you know the best widget on it or whatever, but what's wh- having the best widget on your thing? What does that do? What's how does that make someone's life better in a way? What does it make them happier? Does it, you know does it make them um, save time? What's what's you know, what's the outcome? And Fox is definitely one that's pushed me to think more about outcomes when it comes to um, speaking about my services and products. It's like, what is what is it at the end that that I deliver for the customer that's, you know, that's the thing? You know, it's not the, the actual, it's not my service, it's not the fact that I do a logo, you know, they get a nice logo, but what's, what's beyond that? What's the outcome? Um, once you start to think about those things, it really opens your mind um, to to a wider way of thinking about business and brand in general. Um, it becomes less sort of on rails of logo, website, da da da. You you start to think um, bigger, and the words that you use start to change, um, and then that just by thinking that way and using different words and telling your stories in different ways, that's what differentiates you from every other brand that's not doing that. We've all got our own unique individual stories and if we start to tell them and interact with others with our own unique stories, they then have unique stories and that's what makes everything, for me, that's what makes everything really exciting about um, being a, um, let's call myself a brand builder, um, is that I know that everyone has their own unique story. Um, I work very closely with a creative agency who only work with accountants. And you would think, oh, every accountant's the same, isn't they? You know, they're all going to be the same. They're not. And that was, you know, I kind of went into it thinking that myself. But having now worked with many different accountants, they've all got their, their own unique stories and we've built unique brands for every single one of them and they all have different outcomes they have different purposes different personalities all of that stuff which gets built into your brand strategy every single one of them you would think as an accountant that they're it would be similar there are similarities of course in terms of the services that they offer 
but the way that they all think about their customers and how they want to interact and the outcomes that they want to deliver are different. And that's what makes each accountancy brand unique. Um, and, and that's what allows me when it comes to creating the logo to create logos which are unique to each of those accountancy firms. They don't have an abacus. They don't have a calculator in them. They're all based on the strategic stuff, the purpose, the vision, the mission, the values, the archetypes, the tone of voice. All of that stuff lets me create really unique logo designs at the end of the day. If I didn't have any of that, then they'd probably have an abacus or a calculator. And that's why you see so many accountancy firms with those types of logos because they don't have a strategic set of guides to lead them to that uniqueness that they need to have. Um, uh, uh, Steve saying, love it. And thanks to you and Fox. Um, uh, Nimesh has got some emojis with some hearts and eyes, which is always a good sign. Um, okay, so... Uh, I'm just going to quickly take a quick break. If you give me two minutes, I will be back very, very shortly. That's me back. Okay. Looks like um, some bit of chat going on here. <clears throat> oh, Steve's asking what everyone does for work. Uh, digital marketer. Steve. Few. Um, David's saying, I think back to your case study you released on here about the humanitarian brand, the name escapes me. Um That might be humanitive, 
um, which is actually the company that Fox worked for. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's so Fox has has come from Humanitive and um, now has his own phenomenal uh, business, um, which which I love, I absolutely love. Um, I actually had a conversation today, just kind of going off on a on a side a side note. Um, I actually had a a video call today with the uh, logo designer that created Fox's uh, logo for Phenomenal, um, and I, I absolutely love it. I I I feel his name is uh, Slavic, and I love uh, what he did for um, for Fox. Uh, Fox showed me the sort of the presentation that Slavic did um, and he just captured everything that Fox is about and that Fox is trying to do with Phenomenal um, in this beautiful um, love heart um, icon here. Absolutely amazing. Um, so it was really good to have a chat with Slavic today um, and just sort of pick his brains a little bit on on the work that he did there um, and uh, also looking at his other work. Uh, but yeah, uh, I love what what he's done there for Fox. It's awesome. Um, okay, so uh, I took a quick break there, but uh, we're pretty much at the end of what I wanted to talk about today. Um, like I say, it's a massive, massive subject and you know, we could probably do live streams um, over, you know, the coming months into 2022 and, you know, really look at some of these things uh, more closely. I know that there's quite a lot of you are interested in the strategy side of things, which is great to hear because, I, I'm, you know, it is more and more important and I think it needs to be the foundation of a lot of... Uh, design work now I'm not saying that everybody needs to be a brand strategist um, but I think having an understanding of it especially designers uh, and logo designers identity designers if you have an understanding of what's required and you have a client who comes to you and says hey I need you to do me a logo you can then start to ask more relevant questions um, you know not just you know what industry are you in you know, what product are you selling? What's your brand name? But you can start asking things like, so what's your long-term goal for the business? What's your vision? You know, what's your purpose? Uh, what's the brand personality? And if they're unable to answer those questions, then, you know, little alarm bells can kind of go off and say, right, well, you know, it's, you know, and you can say it's, it's my um, opinion that, you know, that's, you should sort of look at that area um, and get that right because it will really help you um, build a stronger identity when it comes to communicating with your audience. Now, some people will be up for that and some won't um, because obviously it's more investment. Um, but for me, if you invest in brand strategy, it's money well spent because your brand is going to be stronger and you're going to be able to do more things in future Spending the money on strategy early means that you will save money and time further down the line. Um, but I get that, you know, not everyone has the budgets and stuff, but there is work that you can do. You know, you could even just, you know, just work on these four to start with. That'll give you a really good grounding. And then what you do is you then, you know, well, you really should know your target market. <laughs> you know, you really, really should have a good understanding of that. Um these here, this, you know, this sort of this foundational strategy stuff should be done as a minimum. Um, and when you do that, that will kind of open up the doors to sort of a bit more personality. These things like core message framework and story framework, tagline and hooks, those can be done later on um, and, you know, help with marketing and stuff. But these these early ones really should be should be done there. Um uh, Fox is uh, saying, Call, you're a true inspiration when it comes to brand strategy. I would not be where I am without your incredible insight, advice, support, and exceptional work. Thank you so much. Uh, it means a lot coming from you. It, it really, really does. Um, 
but you know it, I think it's there's a lot of team effort goes on and that's one of the things as well that I love about working with uh, clients um, is that I learn a huge amount from from the client because I don't really niche into a specific industry um, I'm a generalist with with who I work with I learn a lot about different industries and and how they approach uh, their customers and and what all the different outcomes can be for for people um, but what you also learn is that even though they are in different industries a lot of the outcomes are the same in terms of how they want to make people feel and behave and act towards their brands so you start to build up a, a quite a large repertoire of of how to, you know, what what's the best way to implement strategic uh, plans for certain uh, companies when they're looking to have a specific result, let's call it a result, with a customer, you know, um, to achieve an outcome that's specific to uh, their product. But the outcome actually isn't unique in terms of how it makes someone feel but you then, I then know, well, actually, this worked for this company in this industry, and I think it's similar to you. We could probably bring that across and, and make that work for you because, as Fox has said, people connect with people, and it doesn't really matter what industry sector you're in because people don't change, really. Um, we're all, you know, we all kind of are drawn to similar things, um, and so it doesn't matter if you are a highly tech orientated company or you're a beautician when you're speaking to the actual people or communicating with people then you just do it on that level um if you try to be too tech heavy then you miss things and come across as quite cold you know so you need to just bring yourself down a little bit and that's where again the you know the personality profiles your target market will help you learn to speak, let's say, communicate in a way that is more like speaking to a real person. And that brings me back around to making your brand live and breathe like a person. Because if you think about it that way, then your words are going to come across like they're coming from a real person and not like they've been put together at a brainstorming session in a boardroom, you know, where it's all buzzwords and keywords. Nobody speaks like that and nobody connects with language like that. You need to speak to people as if, you know, they're in the room in front of you. You wouldn't you wouldn't stand and speak to someone and just talk buzzwords and buzz phrases to them. If you do, then you're a bit of an ass. Um, you really want to, you know, find out more about that person and and kind of work your way around you know what makes them tick and and how are they going to how are you going to draw them in rather than push them away uh and that takes a lot of time uh takes a lot of effort and i think that's the thing with brand strategy it takes effort and not everyone's willing to put that effort in um, but the ones that do those are the ones that you know i think the the crypto crypto market phrase is to the moon you know, a lot of the brands that, that take that time and effort go to the moon um, and take off and really, really do well. Um, so, yeah, um, has anyone got any other questions? Um, one thing I wanted to say is, you know, I've, I've mentioned the, the brand gap today, but there are, there are a ton of other um, books that you can look at. Uh, if you go to my um, kit page, which is kit.co uh, forward slash pixels call, if you go to that page, you'll find a, a couple of sections. I've got one on graphic design books and one on um, logo books. But uh, if you go there, you'll find um, a selection of books that are around brand strategy. Um, and these are all books that I've read and books that I use. Um, there's a big one here on archetypes. It's quite expensive. Um, you probably don't need to go into something like that. To be honest, you, there's plenty of websites where you can learn about um, archetypes. And as I say, I'll you know hopefully have some videos um, about archetypes going into each one of them, giving an overview of each of the, the main, there's 12, 12 main brand archetypes. Um, this is a great little book, actually. Um, do purpose why brands with a purpose do better and matter more um i don't have it here but it's it's 
it's a bit like the brand gap, I suppose. Each page is sort of like a specific saying and phrase and stuff, and it just it's just a really nice book to to read. Um, I really really enjoyed that. Um, and then I've got books in here on on creating brand names because that's an important element as well. Um, styling. Scramble is another book by Martin Newmeyer, but it's actually it's a fictional story, so it's a, it's like a a thriller, I suppose, based around um, brand strategy and how you know how a company drags itself out of failure. Um, but it's you know it's told in a it's told in a really nice way, um, and uh, it's got twists and turns in it. I find it a really really good a really good read. So if you want to kind of and and you pick up um strategic lessons through the story um it's done really really well it was re- it's a really nice book by by marty um designing brand identity is probably a book which is on most uh designers bookshelves that's a really good one if you don't have it as is logo design love but br- designing brand identity and branding in five and a half steps these are two really good books if you're a designer looking to learn more about um, brand strategy or if you are maybe a marketer who understands some brand strategy but wants to learn how to connect more with when it comes to moving from the strategic side into design and the best way to do that then both of these books are really good um, they they kind of take you through all of the stages of that so you can check that out there um, and for anyone that is interested in really learning about brand strategy and how to how to develop it and and create a brand start a brand strategy um then i highly recommend you check out brand master secrets uh let me just get rid of this kit url here um this is a course which i have and have been through and thoroughly recommend um because it basically changed the way that I deliver brand strategy to my clients. It's an amazing um, set of processes. Uh, Essentially, what you see here um, is what you will learn through uh, Brand Master Secrets. Uh, Stephen, who's the gentleman that created the course, is an amazing guy, really, really uh, knowledgeable on brand strategy, very successful, um, and he spent a huge amount of time putting this course together um it's an absolute bargain if you ask me it's um, 897 dollars i think um and he's steven's introduced a three monthly payment option but um it's incredibly in-depth um this is my dashboard here so um i don't know why it's all these percentages are, are wrong um but the brand master class um, has 120 plus videos and Stephen takes you through lots of uh, the elements, you know, through purpose, mi- vision, mission, values, how to work with your client, you know, the stuff that you should be doing, how to figure out your, uh, Steve, you were asking about, you know, creating personas, goes into that in great detail, how to pick out archetypes for your target customer and yourself. All the stuff I have here um, doesn't go into how to create a logo and stuff, but it's basically the the more strategic side of things. Um, and it's absolutely awesome. It's really, really good. Um, and if you wanted to um, take a look at that, and if you were going to buy it, and this is kind of where I throw an affiliate link in here. So the link that you see on screen right now, ryb.rocks forward slash BMS, if you are interested in the Brand Master Secrets and want to sign up um, and buy it, if you use my link, then I'll get some beer money from it. Um, but like I say, I I have this course and it's absolutely phenomenal. And Stephen's actually just created another course called Brand Workshops, which uh, helps you to workshop with your client using the Brand Master Secrets. So for some people, it's like, they're just learning the strategy side and then they're like, well, how do I actually take a client through this? So Stephen's created Brandmaster Workshops, which is a, you know, uh, which runs sort of hand in hand with it. So, and he's constantly adding stuff, constantly tweaking it um, and developing it. And there's a private 
a Facebook group for everyone who's a student of the course. Um, there's all sorts of people in there. You may have seen, um, I don't know uh, how many of you know, uh, Jacob. Uh, Jacob Cass, who has Just Creative, he's really well known in the design world. Jacob's also um, in the group as well. Um, so there's, you know, there's a few... There's a few, as you'd say in Scotland, well-kent faces. Uh, so there's some well-known faces inside the group. Um, you know, so you, there's a lot of knowledge in there. Uh, there's a lot of people in there who are not designers. They are coming from varied backgrounds. There are a lot of designers in there who want to learn strategy, but there's a lot of people in there who've never done design and they are just in there to become brand strategists and then they will outsource the, the design side. So you do not... I want to make this clear, you do not have to be a designer. You don't have to know about logos and stuff. You basically learn everything from, from scratch. Um, and it's really, really good. It's a really, really awesome course. Um, and I think that was all the links that I had to go through today. So, yeah. Um, let me just check the chat, see if there's any... Uh, Steve saying, love, uh, love the live, definitely going to rewatch and pick it apart. That's cool. Um, uh, I will say when I put the poll up, I put up, a, for anyone who doesn't know, I put a poll up in the community tab on my YouTube channel and one of the options was for tonight's live stream to be talking about um, horror movie logos and I was quite disappointed that that didn't get chosen because I was really wanting to talk about horror movie logos but I suppose we could do that at any time. It just felt fitting because it's near Halloween. Um, I knew though if I put in anything about brand strategy it would be chosen and you know what quite rightly too it's a it's a serious topic and it's something that people want to know and I'll you know I'll put it out there I've kind of avoided talking about it because it's such a big topic and I didn't want to just come on live and fumble my way through because I didn't have a really good structure to present to you guys but I think just the way that we've talked through it today just giving you an overview and, and where a strategic plan can really come in helpful for connecting with customers, uh, creating your brand identity stuff like your logo and your website. The website especially, that's a big one because a lot of websites don't really do the job that they are intended to. A lot of websites are still doing what they, they did sort of 20 years ago and that's act as a brochure. Your website should be doing more than that. Your website, your website. I wasn't swearing YouTube. That was a slip of the tongue. Your website uh, should uh, be doing a lot of the communicating that you know that Fox talked about as well, and that I talked about. It should be communicating what are the outcomes that you can give to people. You know, how you should be connecting with them. Uh, an example as well is like your about page. You see a lot of websites are the, about us. Uh, now, my website isn't perfect and I, I need to kind of, you know, make mine's better. But your About Us page should be about how you can help your customer. It shouldn't be, hey, we are X company. We're amazing. We've been around for five years. We've won all of these awards. Da, 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 that's me, 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 me. And to be honest, the customer doesn't doesn't give a crap about you. They're concerned about themselves. How can you help them? So when it's called the About Us page, really it should be called the About You page. You know, about you, the customer. How can we help you? And of course, you want to put a bit of information about your, you know, the team and stuff. But have that kind of either mixed in or have that further down the page. Make the About Us page about how you can help the customer. Um and I'm seeing more, you know, I'm in a lot of community groups that are about, you know, about creating that type of content. And I've seen some amazing um, about us pages that really focus on the customer and the outcomes that that company can bring. And they're all doing really, really well from it. So if there's a lesson to be learned about websites, make the about us page the about you page and it will you know i think you'll surprise a few people um you know when they go on to your website and they're like oh wow they're actually you know they're not just talking about themselves they're actually talking about me uh and then the same for your home page you know um don't say things like welcome to our website we are da, 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 da. we've been around for x number of years we are specialists in this ask a question you know or you know state how you can solve a problem 
pull them in because your home page is meant to get them to the next page. You know, if you're just doing the whole stuff about, you know, this is who we are, nobody cares. Nobody, you'd be better off not having a website, in my opinion. Um, so make sure your website is speaking to the customer about, you know, their problem and how you can fix it. I always go off on a little mini little mini rant, don't I, when I'm talking about stuff like this. Um, uh, Fox is saying, all right, let's go up a bit. There's a few more things. Um, yeah, Fox is saying a special weekend stream for horror. You know what? Um, it's kind of, this is, I'm doing these live streams thanks to Fox, by the way. Um, Fox has, you know, fairly successful uh, Twitch channel. And uh, I, I was like, oh, I got really kind of caught up in that. And I was like, I'm going to do Twitch as well. And I think I did one stream where I played a game for a bit and then I didn't, <laughs> I didn't do anything after that. Um, and I just felt a bit weird on Twitch. And then I was like, well, I, I've been doing a lot of YouTube videos, so why don't I just try streaming on YouTube? Um, and Fox gave me the nudge and the push to do that. Um, and we're now, you know, quite a few months in to me doing these and I'm really, really enjoying them. But I do kind of get an inkling to, not not so much on Twitch, there is another streaming platform called Glimesh, which, I, which I've got a, a, an account on as well. But I would love to just do some streams where I do just play games and just chat with anyone who wants to join and we could talk about design or we could talk about games, we could talk about music, we could talk about sci-fi, horror films, whatever. Um, that would be good to connect with the you know build a community around that as well um so i might do that i might do you know i might if I, I might do it where if it's a topic that i want to talk about i'll create a separate stream from the 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 regular rock your brand live streams i will create a call wants to talk about stream and, and do that separately maybe that's maybe i can i can do that um uh and Steve, Steve's being a cheeky, cheeky so-and-so, saying my Halloween mask looks awesome, by the way. Fair play for wearing it for the whole stream. Cheeky, cheeky bugger. Um, uh, Fox is saying, guess what our, our About Us page says. Uh, yeah, see? There, right? Now, that wasn't a lead-in from Fox, by the way. Um, I don't know why this is loading so slowly. Um, it's probably me. Um just says resolving host but if you noticed even without going to the page it says about you and us so that wasn't you know a lead-in to say oh this is how you do it but yeah uh, i don't know why this i'll just leave this see if it loads um uh and david saying is web my expletive at another pen island uh funnily enough i have said um i have said web it before uh on edited videos and i think it's actually i released a video of outtakes and i think that's one of the outtakes so just got get a little bit tongue-tied um well maybe Phenomenal dot ink is loading for other people, but I cannot get this to to load for me. But my internet has been weird. Um, I'm still getting an error on my stream status on YouTube saying that the quality of the stream is poor. I don't know whether that's talking about bandwidth or it's talking about what I've been saying. Um, probably a bandwidth, I'd imagine. Um, oh, did that just? No, oh, that's the home page again, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah, I'm sure it's an issue with me um, because I'm using all the uh, all the bandwidth or something for streaming. But uh, you can all check that out yourself, can't you? So, so that's a quick uh, stream about an overview of brand strategy. We can go a lot deeper. I'll put up some polls on the community tab in the weeks to come and see if people want to do streams where we go deeper into things like, you know, purpose um, and vision uh, and mission. And look, the page is finally loaded. Um, so, you know, here we go. This is a great example of what I'm talking about. This is about, this is how you talk to your customer, you know, N you know, not talk. So there's a difference between talking to your customer and talking at 
your customer. So this is talking to your customer. This is inviting them in, you know, asking about their story and then talking about our story. So they come first. And then by bringing in your story, you can, you're then bringing that interaction between, between the two of you and making it sound more like a collaborative um way of working now not uh, not every brand is about collaboration you know you might be selling a tin of beans there's no collaboration there as such you know but you can still you know you can still work the customer into a story um and you know fox talks a lot about you know being authentic having empathy and love for you know fellow humans and stuff uh, i know that one of um fox's favorite brands is uh, gusto um, and I know Fox loves everything that they are doing, uh, and you should check out Gusto um, if you know if you're if you want to check out a brand that really has purpose um, and and understands their audience and speaks to their audience. Um, let's see if I can bring that up. Actually, uh, I don't know if it's Gusto.com, um, but my internet is uh, is it Gusto.com? Is that how you even spell it? Probably not. Oh, there we go. Gusto. Oh, it's .co.uk. Okay, so it's gusto.co.uk. Um, you should check these out. Just check out their, you know, check out how they, how they, you know, what they write and, and stuff. Um, but yeah, that's a, it's another good site. Um, I'll go back to chat. Right, I'm running out of words to say. Um, Fox is saying, do you have a newsletter sign up? Uh, I do have a newsletter sign up. Um, there is a scrolling banner that goes across my screen. Um, it's maybe a little bit slow and it's maybe not a little, you know, in people's faces. But uh, for anyone that isn't signed up to my newsletter, um, if you go to rockybrand.co.uk you can sign up to that and once a month um, I've popped into the chat once a month um, I just send out some tips and advice about brand building um, things might change over the, the next few months um, uh, Holly who used to work with me and who used to help uh, me with that has moved on to Pastures New and I'm really happy for her because it's in a position that she really really wants to be in um, so I'm rethinking the newsletter. It'll still be ongoing, but just maybe uh, kind of changing it up a little bit. Um, uh, but we'll see how it goes. Um, and uh, yeah, sign up to that. Um, and you'll get that once a month, first Tuesday of the month. So be sometime in November for the next one. Uh, okay, let's call it a day there. Um, have a fantastic couple of weeks if I don't speak to you before then. Um, I might do that. Uh, I might post in the community tab. We might do that horror movies logo uh, stream as an impromptu stream. Um, I'll either do it on YouTube or I'll do it on Twitch or Glamesh, but I'll make sure I'll post the link into the community tab so that anyone that wants to join can join. I think that would be fun, a fun one to do. So, um, And I'll make sure, Steve, that I wear this halloween mask again for that okay so um everyone take care of yourselves and as ever stay creative i'll see you next time bye for now